Welcome. I'm Tammy Grimes. It is said that perfection is the pursuit of sweetness and light. The pursuit. Is that because the capture itself is impossible? Since the dim and misty dawn of history, man has tried to create a perfect world. So far, it has eluded him. And perhaps it's just as well. After all, if everyone were to be perfect, how could we tolerate each other? Why should I want to kill you? Because I'm the enemy. Enemy? Until ten seconds ago, we never knew each other existed. But each of us is fighting for our planet. True, but I am sick of fighting for my planet. I'd like to fight for me. Wouldn't you like to fight for you? I don't understand. Your ship. My ship. Between us, we have enough firepower to destroy the universe. Why don't we take over? Our mystery drama, Resident Killer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I know a dramatist who has been appointed playwright in residence at a large university. Painters in residence, composers in residence, sculptors, novelists, philosophers, the list keeps increasing. And as our civilization becomes more and more complex, who knows what other specialists may be in demand for residence. Not just for the colleges, but for society itself. The time is 2498, 500 years into the future. Have there been many changes? Of course. Think of what has taken place over the past five centuries. George Barrows is having breakfast with his wife. At least that hasn't changed. I'm told Bill Douglas has been named commander of the fleet. You have the seniority. The council thinks he's more qualified. But everyone knows you're better. You're beginning to sound competitive. But this is a matter of simple justice. Justice, my darling, is never simple. Oh, well, now I have to go. Where? I mean, isn't this your four-day leave? Yeah, I have to go to the port. Yes? Yeah, there are things I have to tend to on the ship. Such as? Uh, very technical. Well, you, you could put it on the simplifier for me. Uh, it, it, it's quite boring. I know where you're going. Teddy's gym. Why did you lie to me? Because the idea of Teddy's distresses you. But you see how dangerous this has become. Now, Ella, it was just an innocent little... No, you claim it's all innocent. Well, perhaps it begins that way. But the fact is, you've told me a lie. And from a lie, where? Teddy's gym is wrong. You know that. Darling, I only go there for exercise. No, you don't. You go there to, to fight. Ella, that isn't why... You stand opposite another human being, and each of you tries to hit the other, to, to hurt the other. No, no, no. It's just a trial of skill. Do you, do you strike hard blows? Well... Is it possible for someone to be injured? That isn't the purpose. All right, does it or does it not arouse aggressive feelings? All right. Yes, it does. You admit it. This, this, this boxing, this wrestling... Isn't it antisocial? Maybe. Oh, George, we got away from all that 500 years ago. Well, would you like for us to drift back into those savage times when it was everyone for himself and every hand raised against one's neighbor? No, but Ella, this is such a harmless thing. Yeah, it is not. It is fighting. It cannot be permitted to exist in any form. It has no place in our society which is dedicated to brotherly love. There's such a thing as too much brotherly love. George, what am I going to do with you? You could suggest me for psych reek. Psychic reconstruction? I, I really should. Well, why don't you? Because I couldn't be happy with, with anyone else. <laughs> Even though I'm aggressive. No, stop this nonsense and give me a kiss. Of course she's right. I'm the one that's out of step. 
we have to have this brotherly love, this absolutely uncompromising belief in the sanctity of the individual. Because the other thing just doesn't work. I mean, it hasn't since the world began. You can't compromise and make exceptions either. There cannot be even the slightest manifestation of aggression. But what can I do? I'm an aggressive person, and the life we must lead now bores me stiff. Please pass this place do by. Do not attend Please the gymnasium. Pass this place Help by. us eliminate aggression. Every day, they all show up in front of Teddy's gym, this anti-aggression society. They're always out in force. Not that they'd use it. The leader was this tall, dark-haired dame, and she really was built, too. She'd make a great lady wrestler. Anyhow, she would stop me. I love you. I love you, too. I love everything that lives. I also love everything that lives. I refuse to raise my hand against anything that lives. I refuse to entertain even the slightest thoughts of aggressive behavior. Aggression is an evil seed. Once planted, its growth... I'm sorry, I could stand here and agree with you forever. You are so beautiful and intelligent. However, you must excuse me. Will you accept this literature and discover how you can coarsen and brutalize yourself by attending... So kind of you to offer it. May you be enlightened. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Hey, Teddy. Teddy, are you okay? Hey, you knocked out a tooth. Oh, let me see, let me see. Let me see. Yeah. No, 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 no. Nothing's going. Yeah, maybe. It's numb. I can't feel anything. Ooh, your nose is bleeding. Yeah. A little bit. Oh, boy, that was a workout. Ah, oh, sit down. Hey. Hey, who's this, uh, this guy, uh, Douglas, who's just been named fleet commander? Oh, he's all right. Well, aren't you the senior pilot of the space fleet? These days, if you're not a member of the anti-aggression society, forget it. That's the way the wind blows. Yeah, it's starting to howl, if you ask me. Who cares? I'd rather be on my own as a pilot where I don't have to set an example. After all, I could never come here if I were fleet CO, now could I? It looks like you won't be uh, coming here much longer anyhow. I'm uh, going out of business. You're what? Yeah, the handwriting's on the wall. But you can't shut down. I'm being forced out. Teddy, nobody is allowed to use force for any reason. Conditions, George. Look around you. Now, this time of day, we'd have five, ten boxing bouts going. Maybe a couple of wrestlers. This afternoon, it's just you and me doing a couple of rounds. That's the old story. If you can't lick them, join them. Join who? That gang outside with the signs. The kooks? No, Georgie. You and me, we're the kooks now. Those folks... They're the wave of the future. If you refuse to ride it, you'll drown. So I decided to close up. And do what? Get a job. How can you get a job if you're not a member of the Anti-Aggression Society? Huh? I guess I'll have to join up. Come on, it can't be that bad. It's worse. Georgie, I got a kid in school. She's ashamed of me. But how can you join? You don't believe in that stuff. I will soon. I, uh... I signed up for psychic reconstruction. You're going to be psych -re? It's the only way you can get along in this world, George. Yeah. Well, who says this is the only world there is? I'm afraid it is the only world. The other planets in our solar system, and I pass them by all the time on routine weather reconnaissance, but I couldn't live on any of them. I mean, they're too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry... I mean, there's life. There's so many different kinds of life, but none of it's like ours. So what was I to do? Soon I'd be the only aggressive person left on Earth. I'd be considered peculiar, alien. Teddy was right. If you can't lick them, join them. I came home and I told Ella. She burst into tears. George. Oh, George, I'm so happy. You're doing it for me. Sure, sure. Well, you, you'll develop an entirely new and, uh, and exciting perspective on life. Exciting? A, a change in your entire psychological outlook. As you undergo psychic reconstruction, every last vestige of aggression will leave you. You'll know a new calm, an inner peace, a deep love for every living creature. Okay, okay. Lead me to oh, it. Oh, you won't be sorry. 
Look, you say you love me. I do love you. But once I get brainwashed... It isn't brainwashing. I'll be the same as everyone else. I'll always love you. I hope so. And so, I shaped up at Psych Reek. Although, here you had to say psychic reconstruction. The president himself was in charge. We are gathered, Jim, to talk about love. Love for our fellow man. Love that can only exist when there is no envy, no competition, no aggression. Now, to many of you, this may sound dull and boring. Yet, what is the alternative? Hasn't history demonstrated that aggression in any form, no matter how slight or small or seemingly innocent, must eventually inflame passions that will ultimately rage out of control? And so forth and so on, even in our sleep. They ran wires into us, and you'd keep hearing the message. You would begin to feel it in your blood, your nerves, the marrow of your bones. Love. Love thy neighbor. Love thy fellow man. You could feel it seep through you, become a part of you. There was no escape from it. And then things became rough. You were all making remarkable progress. I especially wish to commend pilot George Barrows. And Mr. Teddy Thorstadt. They will be the first to undergo laboratory indoctrination. And class is dismissed for the day. You may all go home. You're back early. He gave us the rest of the day off. What would you like to do? Mm, nothing. Just rest, relax without having all that stuff piped in. I mean. But it makes sense. Wonderful sense. Sure. Soon you'll believe it. I even believe it now. It's just that, it's just that I don't like it. Why not? Because it's against human nature. I don't care what anyone tells me. Man is a competitive animal. But he doesn't have to be. That's the way he is. And that's why he has to change. Because if he doesn't... The world will end. Okay, I hear enough of that all day. Most of us, the overwhelming majority of us, have changed, George. And you must change, too. Yeah, I'll change, but I still won't like it. What, what's what? that? The walls. What? The, they're shaking. It's an earthquake. No, it, it, it can't be an earthquake. 300 years ago, we, we neutralized the molten no, core. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, the, the, the house! Hey. It's coming apart, George. Come on, come on. Uh, uh, Are you... Are you all right? Yeah. Yes, I think so. I, I can't see. The whole house came apart. Oh, all this dust. I can hardly breathe. It'll, it'll settle. How did... What, we're not supposed to happen. Whatever we did. Here, hold on to my hand. Come uh, on. We'll try to move back. Yes. Get some fresh air. Yes. Uh, oh, oh uh, this is better. This is much better. I wonder how everyone else did. Oh, I, George! What? 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 Oh, look, look at you! What? Look! What about me? You, George! Ella! George, you, you have a beard, your hair, it's, it's down to your shoulders. George, you wear it. What is that? It's skin of an animal. Ella, so are you. Tree, trees? What, what, what are those trees? But this isn't where we live. Where are we, George? What happened to us? to us. Here you have a married couple happily living in a luxurious home of the far distant future. Suddenly, without warning, they find themselves stone age savages in the midst of a jungle. What happened, and perhaps even why it happened, are the problems we shall address in Act Two shortly. said Mr. Dostoevsky, is a pliable animal, a being who can become accustomed to everything, and we might add, to anything. While this may be one of man's greatest strengths, it can also prove to be his fatal weakness. It's one thing to adapt to the rigors of the physical environment, 
but it is something else to compromise with the demands of morality or immorality. George! George, what, what happened to us? Where, where are we? I don't know, Ella. Someone's coming. What? Hey, he's dressed just as we are. Who? Who? Oh, it's Teddy. Teddy Forster. Hey, Teddy, what is this? How did we get here? Do you know? Come here, Ella. What? I want you. I want you, Ella. What, what, what are you saying? I've always wanted you. And I am going to have you. What? Teddy, what has come over you? I'm taking Ella. What a, a minute. I have something to say about this. You have nothing to say. Now you shut your mouth. What do you think you're doing? You want to fight me for her? Yeah. Come on! <laughs> Suddenly, we were flailing away at each other with our fists, with rocks, with whatever came to hand. And the blows, they hurt. I mean, they weren't the sharp and stinging jabs we threw at each other in the gym. These were meant to disable, even to kill. Suddenly, something flashed in Teddy's hand. I saw the knife blade too late. There was an agonizing pain as it bit into me, a paralyzing pain. All I could hear was Ella's voice in the distance filled with terror. George! George! Help me! George, help me! And, and then, there was nothing. There was nothing. I'm dead, I said to myself. I'm dead. But I wasn't. There was Teddy coming at me, sword in hand. I knew it was Teddy, even though the visor of his helmet covered his face. And there was the fight raging all around me, the fight for the castle. And I could hear Teddy shouting, Yield! Yield! Never! Burn it! Down to the ground! No quarter! No prisoners! Put them all to the sword! They're a fire, my lord! The castle's a fire! And suddenly, we were in the midst of a holocaust. And there was the terrible noise of the walls collapsing as the burning castle fell in on us all. Once again, there was nothing. Now I'm dead, I said. Now. But I wasn't. Once again, a field of battle and men fighting and falling. And suddenly, I was high in the sky aboard some primitive aircraft. I was releasing ancient bombs, and they were falling on a city which was in flames beneath me. Whether I was the killer or the one being killed, the agony was always the same. I drifted in and out of one massacre, one slaughter after another. I had known of these things. I had read books. I had seen pictures and tapes. But they existed merely as abstract ideas. And now they were happening to me. My suffering was real. It was unbearable. I couldn't stand it anymore. Stop it! Stop it! Stop! Only you can stop it, George Barrow. Only you. How? How? Tell me how. Stamp out the corrupt seed of aggression before it flowers into a fatal and poisonous plant. Destroy it. Can you do it? Yes. Yes. Finally. Oh, finally. It was burned out of me. All thoughts of striving, competing, fighting, aggression. Something had come over me. I was a different human being in so many ways. I'd even become rather quiet. Shy. You want to stay home? Again? Yes. But this is something new. We might listen to some music. That is, if it pleases you. Well, I didn't know you liked to sit and listen to music. You're not at all the way you were. How was I? You mean you don't remember? It's better this way. Won't you agree? Yes. But it's not as exciting. You mean as dangerous? George, you're so different. Of course. I've been psychologically reconstructed. And I want to be perfect. No. What is it, Ella? Well, the thought of of perfection, it frightens me. Are you saying we shouldn't strive for it? Well, yes, strive, but I hope we never achieve it, George. How, how dull that would be. How do you know? I look at you. You're perfect. You, you don't have a single angry or envious or destructive thought in your head. Did you like me better the other way? You were more fun. Uh, you haven't answered the question. One time I had feelings of aggression, and I went through the same psych week. And you changed. But I, I didn't become a fanatic. Is that what I am now? Oh, no, no, George, it's just... But it must be complete, Ella, all the way. A single tiny misstep and we can revert to barbarism. 
You know why you married me. I fell in love with you. Why? Because I was different. You believed in perfection in theory. But in practice, perfection is so hard to live with. Secretly, you longed to be aggressive, but you were afraid to express it. But that isn't true. And while you made a strong outward show of disapproval toward my aggression, you would get a vicarious thrill out of it. I didn't. You would lecture me on how savage and socially destructive it was for me to go to Teddy's gym. Only because there were times when you longed to go there yourself. But that isn't true. I admit it, my darling. Well, is it so terrible to want to be just a little aggressive once in a while? Oh, yes, yes, I, I suppose it is. We must be perfect or we fall back into the pit. You must try, Ella, constantly. Oh, I'll try. I'll try, George. You wish to resign from the space fleet? Mr. President, I have found my life's work. I wish to teach. <laughs> Your most commendable desire, Pilot Barrows. Is my resignation accepted, sir? Commander Douglas is dead. Dead? In space. How? Excuse me. The Douglas tapes, if you please. Yes, Mr. President. Watch the screen, Pilot Barrows. Where is this? Space. I don't see any familiar signs. Yeah, this is not in our galaxy. Or even our universe. It's far beyond any area you've ever been requested to patrol. But why? What was he supposed to be doing? His mission is, was, to intercept any alien invaders. Intercept? What does that mean? Kill. Kill? How could Commander Douglas, a dedicated member of the Anti-Aggression Society, kill? And how can you, our president, calmly sit here and tell me? Listen. The voice tape of Commander Douglas. Douglas to base. Alien ship range. 900 million. Alien course. Turn our system. Destroy. Repeat. Destroy. Isn't he going to talk to the alien first? Pilot Barrows, there is nothing to talk about. We are all living creatures. There's everything to talk about. Mm, we cannot afford to take the chance that the stranger is harmless and holds no thought of conquest. We could ask. We could try to learn. And thus reveal the fact of our existence. We cannot afford to risk war. I am now closed at 600 million. Why did he call it an enemy? How do we know? I've been hit. I, I've been hit. What? The ship. It blew up. He and the alien opened fire at the same time. And now, Douglas must be replaced. By you. Me? No, sir, I cannot kill. It goes against every moral and ethical... You cannot kill because killing has been programmed out of you. You can be reprogrammed. Why me? You are the most skilled of all our pilots. All this time I thought Douglas was a true lover of all living things. But he was only playing a role. And you, our great humanitarian president, you're hypocrites, the pack of you. It's an unfortunate, but... Necessary hypocrisy. Don't try that on me. What would you have? A return to the past? To a planet armed to the teeth? A planet that accepted killing as the only means of preserving itself? This way, one man, and one man alone, roams the distant reaches of space. One man alone is armed. One man alone protects. But it isn't one man. You're in on it. The base coordinator, the technicians who service the ship. It's a small but highly trusted group. The base coordinator. That voice, I heard it before. She's the leader of the anti-aggression society. We must have a killer. It's it's the price we pay. I don't want to be that killer. I don't want to be president either. I don't want the responsibility and the heartache. I want to be like everybody else and think happy, heartwarming thoughts. I don't want to be haunted by the knowledge of the dark side, but I am the most qualified. I will not be the killer. You will. Because you are the most qualified. Every society needs a killer. One who is authorized to commit murder to preserve the rest of us. There must be an alternative. Oh, there is. 
We can submit to invasion, to be conquered, destroyed, enslaved. At least that way, there'll be no blood on our hands. We will be free of guilt. And you're willing to accept that? Am I the only pilot? You're the most trustworthy. We're placing our fate in your hands. We are giving you the power no one else in the world possesses. The ability to destroy us. How do you know I won't do it one day? Well, we don't. But it's the chance we must take. That's quite a chance, isn't it? We are giving you the power no one else in our world possesses, says the President. What was it that Lord Acton said about power? Ah, yes. Power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. It seems to be the rule, judging from history. But all rules have exceptions. Or do they? The answer lies in Act Three shortly. We talk of peace as the universally to be desired state. How we long for peace. And yet we must be aware that we have never truly known it. Throughout history, what we have had at best were some relatively quiet intervals between wars. What must we do to achieve true peace? Our ancestors couldn't find the answer. We ourselves are perplexed. And in the world of the future, it appears so far that they haven't had much luck with the problem either. I have been programmed against it. I cannot kill. You will be reprogrammed. As you might imagine, there was considerable discussion back and forth on ethics and morals, means and ends. But it all boiled down to that one word that usually carries the day. Necessity. So finally, I agreed to being reprogrammed. And who do you think my psych reek was for this deal? None other than the leader of the Anti-Aggression Society herself. Say, the last time I saw you, you were picketing Teddy's gym. Let us confine ourselves to the subject at hand. Remember? Remember? May I ask you not to patronize this establishment? Not to coarsen and brutalize yourself? Pay attention. I don't like this any more than you do, but it has to be done for the good of society. Now, say it over and over again. Aggression is a normal, natural, and innate part of man. But I wasn't going to make it easy for them. I really believed what I had been programmed to believe about the sanctity of life. I didn't want to give it up. Besides, if I could hold on to that belief, they would have to give up on me and choose someone else. I could lead my own life. But they were too smart for me. Why do you resist? This is my own basic belief. I can't help it. You truly believe that life is precious? Yes. Then ask yourself, how can life be precious, be of any value, if it isn't worth protecting or defending? Suddenly, they had found it. The question that could get beneath my skin. The question I couldn't answer to my own satisfaction. I kept hearing that question day and night. How can life be precious if it isn't worth protecting? And like a house of cards, my defenses collapsed. Suddenly, I had no more objections. I was ready for my very first seek-and-kill mission. Perhaps, before I could return, I would have to take a life. Now, could I actually do it? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll give you the order to fire. Why should you give the order? So you can have someone to share the guilt. Board your ship. Before I knew it, I was out there billions of miles away. It was a strange feeling. Here in this world without end... 
How many planets could there be that might support a life form that could be probing for hours? Maybe none, maybe a few, maybe a million. I was all alone except for her voice that tied me to home. Set course that will appear on your computer readout. Wait. Yes? Bottom left quadrant. Coordinates 8730. Do you see? Yes. You have movement at coordinates 8630. I can't tell what it is. After a while, you'll be able to recognize that configuration instinctively. It's a ship. A ship? Prepare to destroy. Destroy? There must be another way. There is no other way. But... Before he destroys you. Range. Range? Activate your range finder. Now, range. Uh, a billion two. You are getting a new course bearing on the computer. Read it. Adjust. Range. Nine hundred million. Prepare missiles A, B, C, D for firing. Oh, please, can't we... Prepare missiles. Acknowledge. Missiles armed. Range. Ah, uh, 700 million. Fire. Fire. I, I... I don't know if I can. Don't think. This is just another routine command from the base. Fire. Fire. Good. Watch. Don't sit there and take evasive action. He may have fired at you. I, I, I can't move. I, I'm sick. I don't feel well. That's to be expected after your first kill. Oh, don't put it that way. It'll be all right. I've taken a life. You'll get over it. Never. After a while, you won't even think about it. Do we really have no choice? Was this the best solution they could find? Maybe, maybe this was the only way we could survive. She was right about one thing. She said I'd get over it. After a while, I wouldn't even think about it. Well, after a while, I didn't think about it. Upper right quadrant coordinates 3419. Upper right 3419. Movement verified. Alien ship. Range. 900 million. Activate range finder. Acknowledge. Arm missiles E, F, and G. E, F, and G arm. Range. 700 million. Fire on six. Ready. Ready. Fire E and F. Fired. Fire G. G fired. Good shooting. He's off the screen. He's gone for good. You can come home. She was right when she said I'd be able to do it without thinking. But she was wrong when she said I'd get over it. Once it was done, once the excitement, the fear, the suspense were gone, I was drained, completely spent, and physically ill. What was the matter with me? And then I found out by accident. I had reported to my base coordinator for debriefing after my latest mission. Good. You got two this time. We thought Douglas was an expert, but you cover a wider sweep than he ever attempted. Huh. What is it? Well, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Shouldn't you report to medical? It's all right. I think I know what it is. It was her right cheekbone. There was a bruise, very slight, almost invisible, but it was there. Or was it my imagination? No, nope, it couldn't be. It was the kind of bruise you get when someone has struck a blow. Who would strike the leader of the anti-aggression society? Who would even strike a blow at all? There was one person who might be able to tell me. I don't know what you're talking about, George. Teddy, I didn't want to ask her. Are you back in business? Yep. But it's all hush-hush, top secret. They all come to me. The president, the base coordinator, the technicians. They have to. Why? Same reason you do. They're all killing. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm the only one who's actually... Oh, sure, but they're part of it. 
any one of them could stop it one way or another, and that makes them all equally guilty. But why do they have to come to you, Teddy? Oh, look at yourself, George. You're a wreck emotionally. You preach constantly against aggression, but aggression is the most vital function you perform. So you have to nourish it, keep it alive. You have to come to a place like this, box, wrestle, compete strenuously. Are we insane, Teddy? Uh, what can we do? It's the only way to save the world. Whether or not it was the only way to save the world, I couldn't say. But I do know that it was the saving of me. The competitive activity started the juices flowing again. And before I knew it, I was a new man. Or maybe I had gone back to being the old one. Even Ella couldn't figure it. You want to go out again tonight? Why not? It's just every night this week. Well, I only suggested it because of you. Me? You said that after my psych reek, I became dull. I wasn't much fun anymore. There is such a thing as too much fun. I was doing my job. My job as killer. I had spotted the enemy ship and was waiting for the firing order from the base coordinator. Fire. C and D. C fired. D fired. Come on home. I looked at the screen. This time the alien ship had not disappeared. There was a dark, motionless blot on the lower right-hand quadrant. I was filled with a great curiosity. Who, what was this alien? I simply had to know. But it was against regulations to approach, yet I had to do it. They didn't have to know. I cut off my transmitter. I approached her quickly. She was a kind of roundish vehicle, not at all too different from my own. Who and what could be a boarder? I locked with her magnetically. I looked over her hull for the entry port. I followed it. And even though I was unarmed, I lowered myself inside. There was a twisted look to everything, a feeling of death. Then I saw him. The most striking man I'd ever encountered raven black hair and deep green eyes wearing a tunic there was a tiny trickle of blood on his forehead you you are the one yes who... i disabled your ship you destroyed it you're lucky you saw me first i would have destroyed you i have better weaponry more firepower my world is more advanced than yours how do you know because you have not learned to read minds yet you're reading my mind Yes. That is how we can communicate. You're bleeding. Let me help you. You cannot. I... I'm helping myself. How? Your missile did a great deal of damage. Inside me, my body is now trying to repair itself. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the nature of the universe. Right now, my body is trying to repair itself if it can. Why don't we... Oh, but it didn't say. What is? We should get into your ship and and go to my planet and take it over. Take it over? Rule it. Own it. We have the weapons. Submit or we shall blow you out of existence. Then we'll go to your planet. We'll give them the same ultimatum. You and I, we will rule together. Oh. We... You and I, we do the work. The dirty work. Why shouldn't we? My body, it isn't repairing. I, I'm dying. And he was dead. The most unusual man I had ever met. And I had killed him. I went back to my ship and headed for home. And so, in recognition of your devotion to duty and your splendid performance, not just as a pilot, but as a dedicated member of the Anti-Aggression Society, I'm honored to present you with the Medal of Perfection. Wear it proudly. Thank you, Mr. President. But while you have given me the Medal of Perfection, I don't really own it yet, for I, like everyone else, must still strive for perfection. I thank you. 
A most gracious and modest speech, Commander Barrows. Mr. President, do you remember when you posted me into my present assignment? I had asked you a question. Yes, I remember. Yes, I had asked, since you are giving me the power to destroy the world, how do you know I won't do it one day? Yes. And do you remember my answer? That's the chance we must take. None of us really knows the answer. Not yet. This unknown, magnificent man I murdered... He didn't know the answer either. He came to a certain conclusion after how much disillusion and frustration. And am I getting there to... When he had suggested to me that we take over both worlds, I recall now that I didn't automatically and instinctively turn it down. Is it possible that I will actually do it one day? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But he's thinking about it. And once you begin to flirt with a dangerous idea, it's like flirting with a dangerous woman. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, ah, well, I shall return shortly with another insight into our story. Throughout history, peoples, nations, have turned to so-called strong men and said, protect us from our enemies, our enemies within and our enemies without. Throughout history, all the stories have had the same dismal endings. People discovered after it was too late that they had only invited the fox to guard the hen house. Our cast included Mason Adams, Russell Horton, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Hello, my name is Dick Brescia, and I'm the senior vice president for the CBS Radio Networks. For the past nine years, we've been pleased to have been part of helping bring drama back to radio in the form of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater. The man most responsible is with us. He's producer-director Hyman Brown. These have been the happiest nine years of my 50-year career of creating radio drama. The response to all that we've been doing has been most joyous. The theater of the imagination once again became a vital part of all that radio is and can be. Unhappily, this broadcast marks the end of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater as part of the network schedule. After 3,000 broadcasts, we hope we leave you with many fond memories. I want to say thank you to you, our listeners, to CBS, and the station you're listening to for the support and encouragement, and most of all, to the hundreds of talented writers, actors, and technicians who've helped stretch our imaginations. I hasten to assure you that although this series draws its final curtain, radio drama lives. Until we meet again, and we will... Thank you. Good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs>